Welcome back, my name is Mark, this is Supersonic Sax. If it's your first time here, this channel is all about learning how to play the saxophone correctly from a mechanical perspective, so that you're never fighting with the instrument to make music. Today's video will be the first in a series about how to work through Sigurd Rascher's landmark publication, Top Tones for the Saxophone, which was first published in 1941 and has been in print continuously ever since. This was the first work that addressed how to produce the saxophone's upper register which had been largely forgotten or disregarded by many of Rascher's contemporaries. He reminded his fellow musicians that Adolf Sachs had intended his invention to be played over a much wider range than was commonly accepted at the time. Throughout Rascher's career, many works were written for and dedicated to him by composers who wanted to make use of his extended range, particularly on alto sax. The use of the saxophone's high notes was met with some resistance, but nowadays it is commonly accepted that the altissimo register, or top tones as Rascher preferred to call them, are a natural part of the instrument's range, and are studied by every serious student of the saxophone. I first came across top tones for the saxophone in high school, when I asked my band director how he was able to play so much higher than my alto sax on tenor. He directed me to this book, and I excitedly brought it to my private lessons teacher. Now this guy was an old school doubler who played something like 35 instruments, and I got a taste of the resistance to these ideas that Rasher may have been met with. My teacher took one look at the book and said, that's a gimmick, and then turned to the fingerings page so I could try the notes for myself and see they didn't work, which highlights the warning that Rasher gives to readers on the fingerings page. Many a player has doomed himself to failure by neglecting or omitting the exercises on the preceding pages. This brings up another very important point. The fingerings are the least important aspect of successfully producing the saxophone's high register. Our task is not to memorize fingerings, but to learn to manipulate the acoustics of the instrument to play the higher overtones. And in order to do that, we have to start from the bottom of the range and work our way up. The only way to reliably play the higher notes is to first master the lower ones and establish a foundation on which we can build. To use a construction analogy, we can't put the roof on before we build the supports. To this end, Rasher plainly states in the introduction to the first edition that before beginning to study high tones, every saxophonist should be able to command and control completely the attack, quality, and vibrato of every tone within the normal range. Therefore, this treatise begins with a few tone control exercises, which it is hoped will not be unfamiliar to the majority of saxophone players. Nevertheless, it is very important that these preliminary exercises be practiced with the utmost exactness and that they be used daily for a long time. These are the most important and essential exercises that you can do as a saxophonist. Without exception, every player with a great sound will credit that to the regular study of long tones. So let's get started. The very first exercise in top tones is simply called sustained tones. Play a note completely steady, without vibrato or a change in volume. Next up are terrace dynamics, and there are three versions of this. Stepped dynamics, in which the volume of each note is gradually and evenly reduced with each attack. Crescendo and decrescendo. and its opposite, decrescendo and crescendo. As a side note, when asked about his practically unlimited range, Lenny Pickett stressed the importance of long tones, in particular, these terrace dynamics in the Rasher book. So these long tones have to be done with every note from low B flat to top F or F sharp at every volume plus the three terrace dynamics. Let's say there are eight possible dynamics from loudest to softest plus the three types of terrace dynamics and 33 notes from low B flat to top F sharp. That gives us 363 individual long tones. Ideally, we would all have the time and patience to do this every day, but due to the various time constraints we face in daily life, 
This brings to the forefront a very important point about the exercises in top tones. It's not necessary to play them for hours every day. A few minutes each is fine, but it does have to be every day. There is one pitfall I want to warn you about. Be careful when playing at soft dynamics to not constrict the airstream and create unnecessary tension when blowing. You may find that when trying to play very quietly, that you attempt to achieve this by taking a big breath and then letting the air out little by little. Whether you're playing high or low, loud or soft, your airstream has to be just as free flowing. The last exercise in this section of the book is for uniformity of tone character. The idea here is to make every note sound as similar in quality as possible to every other. Starting with middle F, climb up chromatically two half steps. Keep going until you reach the highest note with your keys, whether that be F, F sharp, or even G in some cases. Then turn around and start to descend. Continue down to low B flat or A, reverse direction, and then go back up until you reach low F, and stop the exercise there. Depending on how fast you go, this takes about 15 to 20 minutes to get through, and it's a great exercise to practice playing all of the notes in the normal range. In the next video, we'll continue with the very unique practice of tone imagination. Keep doing the breathing calisthenics and stay tuned for the next video.